Hi, I'm Semen Yaakov. This presentation is entitled An Intuitive Explanation of the Flyback Converter in Comparison to Flyback. There is a relevant video to this presentation, a piggyback winding in PWM converter. This is the link, and I'm going to print the link in the description section of the video that you are now watching. Now, the name Flyback is a trademark of Texas Instrument, and I'm going to talk about it in a second. So here it is. There is a paper that was published quite a while ago, I think in 2015, by people from Texas Instrument, and it's called Isolated Bias Supply for IGBT Gate Driver Using the Flyback Converter. Now in, in the introduction, they are saying the following, that they are proposing the flyback, and that this topology is also known as the isolated back converter, where the isolated output is generated by adding a coupled winding to the filter inductor of a back converter. So the flyback is not new. It's just a new name for something that has been known, although there is some difference in the way that Texas Instrument is trying to sort of describe the circuit and provide reference design for it, and I'm going to talk about this later on. So what is this uh, flyback? As I've said, this is well known, uh, isolated back. I, I'm calling it a piggyback back, in which you have a back converter. This is the back converter, this is the load. And then you have an extra winding on the inductor, such that you have also an output which is isolated. And as it turns out, it will be sort of also controlled, although there is no feedback from this winding, I'm going to discuss it later on. Now, I'll call flyback the special case, which again, Texas Instrument is promoting, in which there is no load. That is, it's not operating as a back anymore. There is no useful output here, although this voltage is controlled. The useful output is here at a isolated tap here, could be one or more windings. So I'll call this a flyback, and this is the more conventional arrangement. I'll call this a piggyback. Now, Texas Instrument published a reference design for such a converter. Here we have a controller. It's a synchronous back controller. And then we have this magnetic element. You can call it coupled inductors or transformer. And then we have the primary here. And then we have a number of secondaries. It's a plus minus 15 volt, 200 milliamp, and then we have a 5 volt, 1 amp. And here you see this voltage here is controlled. The feedback is coming from here, but there's no load in here. So this is really a very unique application of the isolated buck. Now, when there is no load, this topology is very similar to the flyback, except that in the flyback, we have the input here, and then we have the output. Now, usually we'll take the output signal through a isolated link for feedback. And in fact, Texas Instrument is claiming that this is one of the major advantages of the flyback, that you don't need the feedback from the output. The feedback is coming from the primary side. But this is not really correct because we have now primary side control of flybacks. So in this respect, there's really no difference between the two. However, the operation is different because as you can see, we have here the input, while here we have in this side the input, in the flyback, we have two transistors, we have one transistor here. So it's, it's different. And this is what I'm going to discuss later on in this presentation. So we have actually three configuration. We have the back or isolated back or piggyback. We have the flyback. And then we have the flyback. And the question is, what is the difference between them? So let's have a look, first of all, how is the isolated buck operating? So here I'm showing the on state, so that the upper transistor is on. We have a V in. And then we have the regular operation of a buck in which the current is flowing through the inductor. And the current is, of course, rising because the input is higher than the output. Now, due to the arrangement of the dots here, here we have plus voltage, here we have minus, but the dot is here, the minus, and here is the dot. So consequently, the voltage on the diode is 
negative, so it's not conducting. And in this case, the capacitor is actually providing the energy to the load. So we're going to see the inductor here, the current of the inductor going up, while the output voltage here is going down. Now when we come to the off state, okay? When we have the off state, the voltage here is zero. This is the lower transistor conducting. So now it's plus here, minus here. Notice that now this voltage is actually regulated because we are re regulating the output voltage of the buck. So at this stage, the voltage across the primary is sort of a constant voltage. Now the dots are in such a way that if you have here now plus because of this voltage, here we have minus because of the ground, we, you have here plus, so you have actually current flowing through this secondary. Now, in this case, we just about connect a charge capacitor to a capacitor with a lower voltage. I mean, within the transfer ratio here, the turn ratio of the element, the magnetic element here. So therefore, you'd expect a high spike because of the voltage here being different from the voltage here, again, scale. So we're going to have a secondary current, which is very high. And this current actually is sort of absorbing the current from the primary, so that therefore we're going to have a net current here, which is negative, supposed to go very low, okay? So this will be the way that energy is now transferred from the primary to the secondary. Now I'm talking about a situation in which this energy is only a fraction of the total energy of the load, okay? So we have a major current here, some of it is now going this way. So to just have a better understanding of what is going on, I've set up an empty spice simulation circuit. I have here the half bridge, and then this is the inductor, which is coupled to these output. And this is similar, or actually following the design of the reference design of Texas Instrument. I have a load here, and then I have two loads at the outputs. And I'm running the simulation with a coupling coefficient of one, so I don't want to see the secondary effect of uh, the leakage inductances, oscillation, etc. So to see clean waveform, I'll talk later on about the effect of leakage, okay? So let's run it. And here what I see, I see the inductor current, the primary, going down, as we have said. Let's have a look here. It's going down because of the secondary being high and it is sort of absorbing the current from the primary so the net current here is going down but you see that it is clamped the the current of the secondary is not going very high as i assumed because of the connection of the two capacitor but it is clamped now why is this this has to do with the structure of the circuit and here it is as we turn off the upper transistor, so we go to this off state, we need a dead time. During the dead time, we have a diode here. So now we are supposed to support a current going this way because the secondary current is very high, that's taking the current from the primary. Now it can't go negative because of the diode. So it is clamped. And here I'm showing it with the gate drive so to understand what's going on. So this is the high side drive. This is the low side drive. This is the dead time between them. And you see that the current of the secondary is going up. Current of the primary is going down, but clamped here. So this is also clamping the secondary current. But then as we are past the dead time, already the capacitor is charged so therefore the current is just going down okay so this is the situation here so what we see here is the primary a momentary drop and then it goes up again to the regular current of the inductor because there is no transfer more between the primary and the secondary so there is no secondary current in the winding okay?
okay? So the, the capacitor is already charged. So now what happened with the flyback configuration? That is when there is no load here. So it's not just a part of the current or the energy going to the secondary, it's the whole thing, okay? So again, we have the off time, which is the relevant one for energy transfer. But in this case, all the energy of the primary, that is of the inductance, is then transferred to the secondary. So we are not supposed to have something like that, okay? We are supposed to have a very low current after the transition here, and then when we, the two are connected and we have all the energy going to the secondary, we're not supposed to be left with any current because all the energy going to the secondary. And this is indeed what's going to happen. We are going to see that the primary during the on time is going up. And then because of the high current of the secondary, actually the current here reverses. And we see here a negative current. So there is a difference, a major, major difference between the case of the so-called isolated buck or piggyback buck and this, uh, what I call now, fly back, in which all the energy is going to the secondary. So it's a different type of an operation. In both cases, the output is related to the input voltage, which is controlled in the two cases by just the turns ratio. Because as I've said, we are basically connecting a capacitor to a capacitor. Now, the peak current during these transition depends on the leakages and the resistance of the wire. So it's not a controlled transfer of energy like in a regular PWM that you are charging and discharging a capacitor through an inductor. Here you are connecting actually two capacitors and what is sort of limiting the current is just the leakage. So what we have in the flyback is something different from a regular PWM converter. In this case, Energy is not stored in the magnetic element. Energy is actually stored in the capacitor, where there is some energy stored in the inductor, but it's small compared to the energy here. And then the energy is transferred from the capacitor to the output. There is some energy here, but most of it is here. So it's a really different situation from the flyback. In the flyback, we have energy stored into the magnetic element, during the on time and during the off time, this energy is going to the output. That's not the case with the flyback. It's entirely different situation. This could affect, of course, the size of the magnetic element. What Texas Instrument is claiming is that the magnetic element required in the flyback is larger than the flyback. Well, we'll see about this later on. So here now is a comparison between the flyback. This is it. Here we have the case in which there is no load, it's one mega ohm. And then we have here a flyback. Now in this case, I've used the same magnetic element as given in the reference design of Texas Instrument. Okay? I've added also a measure of the magnetic flux density of the magnetic element. And this is by taking the integral of the voltage of the primary. Now from Faraday law, we know that B is an integral of voltage times this constant. So by taking the integral, and this is by using the empty spice operator SVT, which is an integral of the voltage across the primary, I can get a measure of the magnetic flux density, which will affect the size of the magnetic element. Another aspect is, of course, the current through the wires. This is for the winding window area. So this is another aspect. But for the magnetic element, what is important is the magnetic flux density. So here it is. I'm showing, first of all, the flyback current, the primary and secondary. This is exactly how we expected them to be. Okay. And then we have here the flyback. We see that the flyback is in the continuous current mode. This is the primary and this is the secondary. And then we have the output voltage. I've adjusted it so it will be about the same. It's supposed to be 15 volt, I think. It's only 11. It's okay, I guess. And then we have here the 
magnetic flux density. And indeed, in this case, we see that in the case of the flyback, we have a larger magnetic flux density, which would imply a larger core in terms of the uh, core, the magnetization of the core. Okay, but this is for the same magnetic element as proposed by Texas Instruments for the flyback. If I change it to 20 microhenry, because there is no need for 40 microhenry for the flyback, no need at all, we see that the magnetic flux density is about the same. Still, the flyback is in the continuous current mode, although the slope is sharper here, faster as compared to here because of the lower inductance, but it's still in CCM. The operation of flyback, of course, is the same because I haven't made any changes here. So you see that, in fact, in, in terms of the magnetic flux density, there is no difference here. And I think that you can do much better than that due to the limitation of 20 minutes that I've set for the video. I'm not going to dwell on it, but the claim that the flyback magnetic element is larger, I think is incorrect. Now I've added now a simulation with some leakage. Now in the previous runs, the coupling coefficient was one. Here it's 0.99, that is 1% leakage about. You see there is this effect of oscillation, also a shift in the output as expected. Well, I don't know how is this LT spy simulation accurate in terms of this parasitic or second order effect, but certainly it shows in general what is really happening. And this is what you'd expect that the leakage inductance will oscillate with the parasitic capacitance in the circuit. Well, then you have losses which may not be represented correctly in the LT spy simulation. So actually, this oscillation may damp down, but in general, you have more noise, of course, when you have this leakage intact. Now notice that the change in the current of the primary and secondary is much slower than without the leakage. Here it is. And the reason is, of course, that the leakage now is in between the two capacitors, and therefore it's sort of slowing down the rate at which the current can increase. So this is makes a lot of sense. So what are the conclusions here? The flyback topology is an excellent solution when combined with the primary side load. That is when we are talking about a back converter which has a load and then we take some of the energy for the secondary. This is an excellent solution, well known, used a lot and very, very useful. On the other hand, using this topology without a primary load, just sort of mimicking the flyback, I would say, I would doubt if it has really an advantage over a flyback. Because with a flyback, you can have the primary side control. And I don't think that the magnetic element of the flyback will be, in fact, faster. You can work with the flyback at discontinuous mode at high frequency because the losses will be lower. So I don't think that the flyback is really any better than flyback. So this brings me to the end of this presentation. I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found it of interest and perhaps it will be useful to you in the future. Thank you very much.